I'm just waiting for Abby. Abby, are you on? There you go. All right, hold on. Start in a couple seconds. Hi. 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 Can you hear and see me okay? Yes. Can you hear and see me? Yep. Okay, good. Yes, I can. Let me make this louder. So we'll give it a couple of more seconds, um, have a couple people join on. Um, so I will ask you to introduce yourself and okay. what you do. Um, and we'll go from there. And there's a couple questions that people had asked. And then I have a bunch of questions for you that I think people would really benefit from. And at the end, if people have questions, you know, feel free to, to ask. Okay, great. Okay. Um, so, okay, so my name's Dr. Jamie Zuckerman. I'm a clinical psychologist outside of Philadelphia. Um, and today, or tonight, I should say, we have um, Abby King, who is a certified divorce coach, and she will talk about what she does and what that means. And then we will answer questions. Yeah. Hi, Jamie. Hi. Um, thanks for having me again. Yes. Um, I am a certified divorce coach. I help my clients with every part of the divorce process, um, starting with should I or shouldn't I get divorced, um, and all the way through wherever they need me. So some clients really struggle with um, should I, shouldn't I, and we go through what divorce will really look like for them so they understand and can better make that decision. Some people need help with custody arrangements. Some people need help getting organized for lawyers finances, um, a lot of clients just need somebody to talk to um, who's knowledgeable about divorce and maybe their friends and family haven't gotten divorced. They're the first ones. Um, and somebody to talk the big decisions through with. So it really is, I really meet my clients exactly where they are and um, I offer a very specific and tailored approach depending on what they need. Mm -hmm. What, what, what's the average length of time that you work with someone? I know it probably varies drastically, but what's the average? I'd say about uh, probably six months. Okay. Um, I mean, I have a client that I've been working with for like a year and a half, um, and months can go by, and then she'll email or give me a call, and something comes up, there's an issue. So um, usually it's for a couple months of, and you know, in the height of it. And then I'm always available for email, text questions. You know, if it turns right. into a full session, then we'll start scheduling that. But right. um, yeah, okay. I'd say usually about like six months. Okay, that's a decent amount. So uh, what we were gonna discuss today specifically was divorce and navigating divorce, or if you are already divorced, what custody looks like, what the relationship looks like, not just through a pandemic, but a pandemic going into the holidays and the new right. year, uh, which obviously is a stressful time regardless of divorce and regardless of a pandemic. So we kind of pile those things on top of each other and yep. it can be a perfect storm. So yes. um, I think I'm going to ask the questions I had first and then I'll kind of chime in with the, pe okay. the people that sent me. But what would you say is the biggest issue or problem that people either Actually, let's say people that are already divorced mm -hmm. go through this, you know, a holiday season. Um, what would you say are the biggest issues that you have to work with? What are people's biggest complaints or problems that they bring to you? I think that problems really for holidays um, happen when you're going through the divorce process and you don't think about holidays in the way that you live them. Uh, okay. And so this is where um, having a best friend that was divorced or a family member or a divorce coach, somebody who can, you know, kind of say like red flag, make sure you think about this. A lot of times people don't think about how they live the holidays. And so, you, you know, when you get divorced and you come up with a custody arrangement, you look at all the holidays. July 4th is a holiday, Memorial Day, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Hanukkah, mm -hmm. um, school breaks are holidays of a different sort. And a lot of times they just, um, people will just put down like every other year, you know, they split it. Um, sometimes people will call like, hey, I love Thanksgiving and you never did. So maybe I can have every Thanksgiving and you get every Easter or Passover. But they don't really think about um, how they live it. For instance, you know, Thanksgiving, right? It's Thursday. 
it's not really always Thursday because maybe it's Wednesday night because you're traveling, you know, a couple hours or on a plane or you're driving. So maybe Thanksgiving starts Wednesday after school. Mm -hmm. Maybe it goes till Saturday. Maybe you stay wherever you're traveling or if you're having your grandparents, you know, come visit. Maybe they stay and you go shopping on Black Friday. Maybe you've done that every year. Um, so Thanksgiving's not just Thursday, maybe. Maybe Thanksgiving's right. Wednesday to Saturday. Right, right. And you don't really, um, I mean, I didn't even in, um, you know, in my divorce, we didn't realize that until like the second year, like, oh, okay, well, really the kids should be here on Wednesday night. They might not come back on Friday. We're not going to get up and rush and in-laws are in. And so you have to really think about how you live the holidays. Mm -hmm. um, so I that love that. I like that a lot, how you live them. Because it isn't just a holiday. It's everything that goes along with it. It's like you said, it's Black Friday. It's the grandparents coming in. It's when you're done school, are you traveling? What time do you get there? What time do you get back? Because if they're supposed to be at dad's on Sunday, but you're yeah. traveling on Sunday, well, that Sunday they're with you. So how do you navigate that? So I think that's Yeah, and you know, and uh, like Memorial Day weekend, Jamie, like people like Memorial Day, the holiday is Monday. Right. Okay, it's not though. You right. go... Right. I mean, the barbecue might be Monday, but it's right. Friday till Monday Tuesday. evening or Tuesday morning. Right. right. Um, and people will have, you know, every other year the dad has this year. And, but if it's not his weekend and right. he just gets the Monday, then he's got to be home at 9 a.m. on a Monday or she has to be home at 9 a.m. on Monday to get the kids till 5 p.m. It's So you really have to think about what it means. Yeah. Um, and also what's important to you i mean if there's no way around it holidays suck when you're divorced and you share custody um you know it gets easier and you come up with your own traditions and you have suck new traditions you're not with your is it a kid thing or is it just yes. not being with your ex thing? well i mean i guess you know depending <clears throat> excuse me um on where somebody is in the grieving process yeah. of divorce um and then that should go away. I mean, ideally, you're not going to be super sad you're not with your ex five years after you've been divorced. Right. Um, you know, that's a, something else to go through. But after that first, you know, one or two Christmases, hopefully you've moved on from the emotions um, with your former spouse. Mm -hmm. But the kid thing can still, you know, yeah, it, it, it stinks. It gets easier. But, um, you know, it's, it's something that you have to really think about what's important to you. Um, do you love Thanksgiving? And so you want to always have that. Do you and your ex both love Christmas morning? So then you switch every year. Right. And then I think as they get older, you have to think about the kids. Not everybody wants two Thanksgivings the next day. Not ever. I mean, you know, things change. Kids, you know, no spoiler alerts, but kids care more about Santa and Christmas at different times in their lives. And as that ebbs and flows, that changes, um, you know, Hanukkah is always moving. Right. You know, Hanukkah is not a fixed day, right. as you know. So that is tricky to try to navigate that. Um, so I really urge parents to feel sad, which, I'm, you know, you are the therapist. But if you're sad, you can be sad. That's how I, I mean, that's what I tell my clients. You're, you're allowed to be really sad that you're not with you your kids. Should, you, can, you should be. Yeah, on It'll Thanksgiving, if you are not <laughs> Christmas, you know, like, um, yeah. so feel sad. Try not to put that on your kids just because you're sad. Maybe you don't need a second Thanksgiving dinner. Right. Maybe they don't want to do that. You know, try to, as much as you can, um, fake it till you make it. And then, and be open to new traditions. Um, you know, I have a girlfriend that invited me um, to Passover Seder. And I went one year and it was, you know, I was miserable that I was there, but I would have been miserable home. Um, and I appreciated the invitation. I mean, this is years and years and years ago. And then it took a couple years off. And now I've done it since with different friends and it's much more enjoyable because I got through the first couple of years. So um, if you have a friend going through it, extend an invitation. And if you're on the receiving end, just say yes. Yeah. Even yeah. if you don't want to, that can be helpful. Right. Okay. And then as far as the the structure of it so i would imagine that like you said if you're going through the process during the holidays not that anyone is harder or 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 easier but it sounds like because you don't have the custody agreement in place that that's where a lot of the stress comes from as far as 
who's right. going to be with who on the holidays. And I would never have thought to look at the holidays as you lived it. And I would imagine that people who are in this for the first time wouldn't necessarily look at Christmas or Hanukkah or Thanksgiving as how you live it. They would look at the date. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that that is, that's important. Yeah, I mean, that's really what I talk to my clients about. I mean, I have a client who, you know, it's, um, Christmas Eve is really important in his family and the midnight mass and there are certain things and, you know, she never loved going anyway. So maybe you can give that one up, give that to your ex and, mm -hmm. and see where, you know, he can negotiate with you on right. something that's important to you. Right, right. So what would you say are some of the common issues for people that have been divorced five, 10 years and are going through the holidays? Um, specifically, if they have, let's say, a significant other now or they're remarried, what, what do you find is, is the most difficult aspect of that? Yeah, so divorce with kids, um, I try to you know, tell my friends and clients and it's, um, it's a lifestyle because it doesn't go away. I mean, I'm imagining, um, you know, I haven't lived it. My kids aren't grown, but then there's going to be weddings and grandkids. And so, you know, it doesn't go away. So you have to evolve with it. So I think that if you've had something that worked for many years and now there's a significant other in the picture, um, you know, talk to your ex about how you want to handle it. And you're going to have to come up with new ideas and new approaches. That being said, if you've been divorced for 10 years, um, depending on how old your kids were when you divorced, I mean, custody only lasts till kids are 18. Right. So at some point, you know, we, every, I have a, an agreement. My current husband has an agreement with his ex. Everybody has a custody agreement, but at some point kids grow up and they're going to be able to say, you know, what they want to do. Right. right. So that should alleviate it a little bit as your kids are older. Um, and I would urge, parents to be mindful when your kids are 23 and you know out of college and they have a girlfriend you know of a year and they want to go to Thanksgiving maybe that's not you know and if one parent has always done that maybe that's not the year for the ex to say you know what you've always done it all these years why don't we do this you know try to keep some continuity in the traditions mm -hmm. um, I think families that can do it together that's great um, you know, maybe not the first year, the second year, maybe you do holidays together mm -hmm. for a couple years and then maybe there's tension when somebody has a significant other, I guess, remarried. Right. So maybe you stop for a couple years and then eventually maybe you can get that back. I feel like that would be the kind of, if you're doing things together, when one person gets a girlfriend or a boyfriend and that to me seems like it would be kind of a pivotal moment where things yeah. start to get tense if the other one doesn't have somebody and then you, you have their exes and their kids and, and you know, the situation just kind of expands. like No a blows. Yeah. 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 So I think it's, you know, you never want the new person that's coming in to be the reason that things have to change. Mm -hmm. So whether it's, you know, oh, kids. Can you expand on that a little bit? That's okay. Cool. Right. So, yeah. um, if my, if my ex and I were doing um, Thanksgiving for four years when we were divorced, you know, ex but still doing it amicably, and then I started dating my husband, my, my current husband, and all of a sudden, it's now awkward for that year. I don't want my, my you don't want the new relationship to be the reason in the kids' minds that something has to change. This might be a better example um, that I heard of recently. You know, sometimes, especially in divorce and little kids, a kid might sneak into the parent's bed, you know, to sleep at night, and then they start dating somebody. Well, that kid can't be sleeping in the bed anymore. Correct. And maybe they right. shouldn't have been sleeping in the bed anyway, but right. whatever. Um, but now you can't say, you know, I'm so sorry, you know, Jamie, you can't sleep in the bed anymore because, like, you know, now Jennifer's coming in, she's my girlfriend and she can't sleep with you. Cause then that, that makes the girlfriend the bad guy or right. the boyfriend. So I think that parents have to, it would be great. Um, I really think like the more you can do the better amicably is great, but there should be some kind of separation because mm -hmm. if you're doing every holiday together, divorced, and then the new person comes in, you're not leaving any space for that new person to come in and maybe just have a little bit of a break from the entire dynamic. Right. right. And so maybe you do Thanksgiving together, but you don't do Christmas or Hanukkah. Maybe right. you do Rosh Hashanah, but you don't do Break the Fast. Maybe you do Easter, but you don't. 
So have a holiday or two or somewhere throughout the year. Um, you don't need to do a Memorial Day, July 4th and Labor Day right. with your ex. Maybe you do one of them. Have right. space where it's just you and your kids for some holidays. Get them used to that. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have to be super painful, but get them used to the fact that we're not together 100% of the time. So and that when the new person comes in, there's room. Exactly. And I think it's really smart, too, because you're right, for, especially for younger kids, if that's the only variable that's shifted is this new person, they're going to label that person as oh, yeah. the reason and they're automatically bad. Yep. They're automatically bad. And I think that's really important because the, the children won't be able to put into words why they feel that way. Um, you know, they'll just say, I don't like him, right? Or okay. I don't like her. They won't be able to formulate that. I guess it depends on their age, but um, that, that would be really difficult. Yeah, and even if they can formulate it, like right. if you're old enough to know that your parents got divorced when you were six, seven, yeah. but for the, now you're 11, but you guys have done Christmas morning together. You all opened gifts together. One went to the other house and like, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, but now at 11, like, you know, there's a new boyfriend or girlfriend in the picture and maybe Chris, maybe we're going to, you guys do Christmas Eve and we'll do Christmas morning in the afternoon or something. And the only thing that has switched is that new boyfriend or girlfriend the kid's going to be old enough to be like, oh, now because he's here, we can't do this right. now because she's here. And it's right. just an awful position to put a new boyfriend, you know, girlfriend, spouse, right. partner, whatever it is in. And they would think they were trying to be inclusive, I would imagine. But mm -hmm. really, they're probably doing a little bit more damage than, than good. Yeah. So instead of maybe doing like if you and your ex are OK doing 100 percent of holidays together, maybe just do like 85. Right. Leave a little bit of wiggle room so there's an opening for somebody to come in and then maybe down the line they can come into those other holidays with your ex. But the, nobody wants that the first year. Right. It's too much. It's a lot. Too much. Um, so one of the questions that I got was, and I'm sure, that, again, this is different for every situation. Obviously, if there's abuse of any type involved, you know, you, you leave as soon as you can. Yeah. Safely do so. Um, you never want to wait if you can help it. But for people that are considering divorce or ready to take that step to get divorced or to separate um, and, you know, get a lawyer, they're in that early stage. Somebody had asked, do you recommend waiting until after the holiday season to start proceeding with that? Yep. Okay. So again, yes, obviously, if you can do it safely and if you can really pull it off, if um, then yes, I mean, there's, it's, it's a short window from Thanksgiving until January 2nd. Mm -hmm. So I think if you can manage that, and there's plenty of things that you can do behind the scenes to get things moving, um, if you're so motivated, great. But it, that's a lot to do at the holidays. And if you can't do it, then don't. Mm -hmm. I mean, don't force yourself in that position. If you guys are really at each other's throats and you can't stand each other, um, that might not be the best idea. Um, but, you know, I have a current client who's waiting till after the holidays and they both are, they're on the same page. It would be great if you can have a talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, maybe sometimes somebody has to go visit unexpectedly a grandparent or they have to go on a business trip or they have to do something, um, you know, not, I never advocate lying, but, you know, a five-year-old doesn't need to know everything. So if you guys can't handle being together, but you, you know, it's not great to say we're going to get divorced and change their whole life on December 12th. Right. Maybe somebody has to go on a business trip right. and maybe they're just down the street in yeah. a hotel. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so do what you can to, you know, get through the six weeks that there are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you talk about some of the behind the scenes things that people can do during the holidays um, to start to go through that process? Because I think, What's helpful to hear is um, what people can have control over during a time of anxiety and heightened emotions. It's important to feel like they have a sense of direction and a sense of control. So what are some things that they can do behind the scenes that would not be obvious to their friends, to their family necessarily? Maybe they haven't spoken about it yet to people. Right. I mean, I always start with write everything down on your mind. Literally. I mean... If you're afraid to be in a house alone, write that on the list. Um, everything you can possibly think of on a 
you know, divorce to-do list. Um, and then you can certainly start organizing your finances, make an Excel, an Excel spreadsheet. I mean, I have a lot of forms that I can give my clients. Um, start taking notes of your expenses. Start thinking about holidays. Start, you can, you know, email two to three lawyers and, you know, have a discovery chat and start to weed out the kind of counsel that you would want. Um, think about your housing. You can always, you know, start looking online um, for mm -hmm. yourself or for your ex. There's a lot of quiet things you can do to prepare for when you're really ready mm -hmm. to move. So I would write down the list of everything that you can think of and then pick, you know, two or three and just start quietly plotting, planning, okay. organizing. Right, right. No, that's helpful because a couple of people who – had the question in that area of, of what do I do? Do I hold off during the holidays? I, I wanted to give them some gray area because it isn't really an all or nothing thing. You can, no. I think what they're talking about is telling the kids. Right. It sounded, you know, cause there's a lot of things that you can do before you tell the kids. And I would imagine and correct me if I'm wrong, that you kind of want to have all your ducks in a row before you tell your kids. And I'm assuming you should not be telling your children. I don't work with kids. But I'm going to assume I would tell my patients, not to tell their children during the holidays. Yeah, and I would, yes, you should have as much as you possibly can have when you tell your kids, regardless of a holiday. They should know when they're gonna be with you, when they're gonna be with your ex, who's gonna be in the house, who's moving, are you both moving, you're going to the same school. If there is anything upcoming, um, an away baseball tournament for a week somewhere, you know, if there's something in, your, in their lives that is important, um, mm -hmm. They, they need to know all of those questions. And maybe the second parent doesn't know exactly where they're gonna live yet, but the answer can be, you're gonna be with you know, me half the time and dad half the time, and I'm, you're gonna be with me during the school week, and you know, dad's finding a place and he will, you know, as soon as we know, but it's gonna be within you know, 10 minutes, and as soon as he has it, he'll take you there to see it. Mm -hmm. There's a lot you can do behind the scenes with, I mean, you should do 99% of your divorce before you talk to your kids. Or that doesn't mean you have to be through the process, but um, already come to them with a plan of who's living where and custody and everything that really affects them. Okay, okay, okay. That's good to know. It's so much, there's so many nuances. There's so many little things. And I, you know, that's why, especially around the holidays, when there's all the stress of that, especially people that haven't really told anybody yet or they're starting the process, there's a lot of family stuff. And so it, not only are you kind of, not that you're hiding anything, but in, but in a way you kind of are. And then you're around, you know, your in-laws or your parents and your siblings and no one knows anything. And so you have to put on this, you know, maybe they know you're having problems, but they don't know that you're getting divorced or separated. And that's gotta be anxiety provoking to sit through that during the holidays. I mean, and I will say, um, it's possible for a couple who, you know, you're getting divorced. You've already talked about it. Like you said, nobody knows. You don't even know the details, maybe yourselves, but you know that it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And maybe you're also waiting till after the holidays, whatever. But you guys have agreed you're separating, you're done. If you agree to get through the holidays together and you're hosting Thanksgiving and your family's coming and the exes are coming and, you know, and the, or the in-laws are coming and there can be as much as it can be painful to fake it there's also a big relief if you and your ex have already talked and you know that like this is now your plan together like you, you don't work as a couple made. right yeah you're like a little team for that weekend of like and it kind of takes the pressure off because yeah. you don't have to fit like thanksgiving's busy enough yeah christmas eve christmas morning presents like it's all busy and if you're not focused on, are they looking at us because we're faking it, but we're miserable? If you and your ex are actually together, like seamlessly faking it together, but with like they the goal of, goal. yeah, and right. it, it actually can take a lot of the pressure off. No one's looking at you. I mean, it can kind of be harder the next year right. when you actually are in the process or done. And then everybody, you know, is kind of looking at you to see how you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, but it's possible to, Fake it with your ex yeah. and fake it and make it work. So one last question, um, this yeah. little, it always flies with you. So this one last question was yeah. um, somebody had talked about, and again, because the holidays are stressful, there's a lot of heightened emotions. 
Um, somebody had asked the question, how do you handle if one of you, or if one of the parents is bad mouthing the other parent during the holidays or the in-laws are bashing the, the, the father or the mother or whoever. And there's this general idea of we don't like them and it comes out during the holidays. What are some recommendations that you have um, to kind of minimize the impact that would have on the, hopefully they're not saying in front of the kids, but that vibe is still there. They can sense it. So what are some recommendations that you have to avoid that? Yeah, I mean, and this is, could be more painful at the holidays, but this is at any time. Yeah. Um, I mean, my advice is for the grandparents, the in-laws, um, keep your mouth shut. Just keep your mouth shut. If you want to see your grandkids, if you want to see your niece, your nephew, um, you know, hopefully, you know, the mother and the father of the children or the mother and the mother, however it is in a house, like they're the parents and they come first. Mm -hmm. So behind closed doors, pillow talk, that's fine. Keep, keep it to yourselves. Mm -hmm. And if it's coming out and then it gets down to the parents of the child, I mean, it's really then up to you to, you know, tell whoever's saying it, like, that's not acceptable. That can't happen in my house. You're going to have to stick up for your ex because you're really not sticking up for your ex. You're sticking up for your kids. Right. Right. So it might feel, you know, we have all had the time where you would love your dad to just, you know, really go give it to your ex on the sideline of the football right. game. Right. But ultimately right. Right. that is, you know, short term, short term gain. Exactly. Um, and you don't really want your father to do that. You want, right. you know, taking the high road and acting classy never gets old. And so just insist I like, upon I like, that. I like what you said that, that it's not sticking up for your ex, it's sticking up for your kids. Yeah, that, you're, sticking, you're sticking up for your kid. Yeah. Forget your ex. It might I be a byproduct. That, but. I could see how that would get lost so easily when you get really angry. Well, I mean, Jamie, it's with everything. Yeah. I mean, if you're, I mean, and it goes on both sides, I'm sure, you know, but if your kid, you know, you don't want your kid to hear your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your best friend, talking about what an ass your ex is. Right. You, you know, so maybe you feel like you're sticking up for your ex, but you're not, you don't want your kid to hear it. If your ex didn't get your kid, like your kid needs new clothes and they have nothing to wear, even though the ex is supposed to get it, like you just buy two pairs of pants then because your kid needs pants. So it, there are a lot of times in divorce where it feels like you are doing something for your mm -hmm. ex and it sucks, but you're really doing it for your kid. That's so important. So you just got to like, yeah, it's hard. Every, it's hard. I, I mean, hard. every That's minute of it. every day. Yeah. I mean, and it's, again, it isn't just the holidays. It's heightened around the holidays, but it's also birthdays. It's anniversaries. It's, there's a, there's a lot. And so it's not just the holiday season, I should say, even though it is, you know, very much heightened, but um, this is why I wanted to get you in close to this time of the year, because I was getting so many questions about, parenting and going through divorce and um you know i wanted to bring in the experts so <laughs> well, thank you i thank mean you. really like people need to just give themselves a break too yeah, like i agree you know what like you might so for everything i'm saying obviously i i believe it and it's the ideal but you know what like if you're crying on christmas eve don't do it on the couch in front of the kids but like if your kid walks in and sees that you're sad I'm sad. This is a really wonderful time of year, but you know, I am a little bit sad about what we're going through. Right. No, you don't right. beat yourself up. You're allowed and to cry. You're allowed to get angry. You're allowed and to. And that also teaches your children that it's okay to have emotions. And it also shows your children that you can work through them yeah. and they can model that. So they know that just because you're sad doesn't mean you're going to fall apart. They can see the resiliency. And I think that's an important lesson to show them too. And that you care. Like it's great right. to hide right. as much, shield your kids from as much divorce stuff as you can. Right. But I mean, so they know you cared. Yeah. Okay. And it validates their experience too. And, and yeah. right. And you care because you're human and you had, even if it didn't work out, you had children with them at some point you did love them. Right. Maybe differently than you do now, but you know, they were a significant part of your life and that is sad. Yeah. So I mean, so just give yourselves a break. I mean, I, I love the holidays, but like I, I love and I, I hate them too. It's like there's so much pressure, yeah. there's so much everything. Like God, like we do there it to ourselves. So much everything. <laughs> so
so much. Everything. We didn't even touch on COVID. That's another night. But Wait, that's, you know, we should do that. That's, that'll be your next one. That'll be your next one. Um, so, all right. So thank you so much. I'm going to have all your information on my page um, that people can get in touch with you and contact you and any questions that anyone sends me, I will send your way. Send my way. Yeah. Thank you so much. This was great. You are like a wealth of information. <laughs> you know, I love talking to you anytime, Jamie. So we'll do COVID next. Okay. I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> all right. Everyone have a okay. good night. Bye. Bye. Thank you.